Well, this is good. This is great, actually. You see, they took off the Celebrations ETBs from the PokemonCenter.com so that they'll be more available later on. Or at least that's what I keep telling myself to make myself feel better. Seriously, though, we got to talk about this. These Pokemon Center ETBs are running amok. And so today we talk about the morality of how or why you should go about buying these things, especially at prices above MSRP. But first, roll that intro. <laughs> Hey Gengar gang, what is going on? My name is Ryan, this is the Analytic Gengar, and welcome to another video. In today's video, friends, we talk about Pokemonic Center exclusive ETBs, and whether or not you should be buying them at any point in the recent future for close to or above MSRP. So, first things first, what are Pokemon Center exclusive ETBs? Well, they are elite trainer boxes that are from the Pokemon Center. And believe it or not, the Pokemon Center typically sells two types. As you can see on screen, there is one for celebrations, although it's currently not listed. But rest assured, because if you go over to our friends on eBay, you'll certainly see what I'm getting at. Now, uh, just to briefly show you the trading card game, as you can see, there are regular ETBs available on the Pokemon Center. However, part of the gimmick is now they are selling exclusive ETBs. Now, these even go as far as to say the Pokemon Center on them, so you can see them right here, Pokemon Center. They typically feature a different artwork, and then the whole gimmick is usually that they contain 10 packs as opposed to the standard eight, metal dice, metal coin, metal hoo-ha, whatever have you, and yeah, the artwork is really what you're going after here. Now, of course, there is one, if not multiple reasons why these are currently really, really um, sought after. For one, the different artwork tends to be something that catalyzes people towards pursuing this stuff. There's also an air of exclusivity around these boxes. I distinctly remember that for the Evolving Skies Pokemon Center ETB, they literally had this up for I think a day. Um, everything sold out and up till now we have not received any indication that there will ever be a reprint. More importantly, there was a purchase limit of four and again, unlike other items where you could buy at one of a variety of different places, there was only one website that allowed you to buy this stuff, meaning the Pokemon Center was the only place you could purchase this stuff at anyway. So all things considered, that is the air of exclusivity that has been established around this stuff. Now, bear in mind, the, up till recently, there weren't Pokemon Center ETBs. The most recent one and the first one ever was the Chilling Rain Pokemon Center ETB. And to no one's surprise, that was a mess because uh, they forgot to put two packs extra in there. And so that's where we had the whole fiasco about the error packs and that, you know, all that hoo-ha. Now, all that said, one of the interesting things is that they did get it right for Evolving Skies, the next set sequentially after Chilling Rain, and of course they also did fairly well to make sure that they were getting this stuff for celebrations as well. But that brings us to the interesting conundrum, because if you go on a website like eBay, you'll find a variety of uh, different prices for different items. Now ignoring the first one, which is the Error ETB Compensation Blister Pack, You'll see that if you just look up Pokemon Center ETB on eBay, the fair majority of the stuff is priced well over two to three times the MSRP of this box. Bear in mind, a Pokemon Center exclusive Celebrations ETB is $65, $64.99, and that is the US price, but obviously there are you know, translations that can be made for your local currency if you're located anywhere other than the United States. All that said, on eBay, you'll see that 190 is kind of the going buy it now price for this stuff. 190 would approximately be almost three times the amount of money had you been able to purchase this on the Pokemon Center. And a variety of people are confused as to why that is. The fair majority of people probably think it's scalpers and robots, which has basically been the problem plaguing the community for the better part of 18 months. Basically, people know this stuff is in high demand, so they get either robot automation or, you know, an established scalper system through which they can get onto the Pokemon Center, buy the stuff, and then flip it on the internet uh, for you know, a lot of money. And as you can see, the trend kinda continues with other um, items as well. So the 
Elite Trainer Boxes down here, the Pokemon Center um, Elite Trainer Boxes there, for Chilling Rain anyway, they are actually still priced above MSRP. MSRP on these would have been 40 because again, every person who bought one of these actually also got a $10 refund, meaning the cost to them was only $40. So these are selling for $50. As you can see, the Evolving Sky ones are, and I admit that these are quite high prices, but you can see these are $185. You can see there's a bid on this box for $100, which means assuming this gets paid, you're looking at $115. Again, for a box that costs $65, that's almost double the price. And here's one that's about you know two days away, and it's already over double the price. So, interestingly enough, the story we begin seeing here is that Pokemon Center ETBs are carrying a premium and they're carrying a premium well into their you know several months after the fact here's one ETB just for $80 so all that said I think we've established that yeah there's a lot of resale and there's a lot of secondary market for this type of stuff but why is that well the first thing to bear in mind is of course that air of exclusivity that I was talking about a little earlier um, when this stuff is in such limited print, similarly to the Hidden Fates Ultra Premium Collection or the Marnie Premium Collection, what ends up happening is the value of this stuff inherently becomes greater than any of the surrounding product. And the main reason for that is, again, because if they're only going to print this once, it stands out because of its limited availability. The other thing to bear in mind is that technically these are premium products in many ways. Don't forget that these have a different art style compared to the regular ETB from the sets. So bear in mind that the normal ETB for celebrations will look completely different. Bear in mind the Evolving Skies one is also completely different. And may I say the Pokemon Center ones are gorgeous. So all things considered, you know, this stuff displays well, it looks really cool and it has extra product in it. You know, um, here's just an example of the pin that's available in the uh, Evolving Skies ones. Obviously, they come with metal dice and metal um, extras in there. So again, tons of reasons why these would sell for extra money. But the real question is, should you be buying this stuff at that extra money? Now, to answer that question, I first want to make a couple of disclaimers very clear to everyone watching this video. The first is that for anybody who knows me or watches this channel with enough frequency, you know I never advocate paying over MSRP for modern product. The truth of the matter is, it's a bit silly to do that because even if in the next 10 months you don't get product, sooner or later, things will begin to get back to normal. And when that does happen, and when Pokemon can really push the gas on this stuff, they will. And frankly, we've already seen that happen, albeit a little choppy, albeit a little difficult. But Pokemon is certainly increasing the number of production facilities and the raw number of cards that are getting produced every single day. And even if that's coming in choppy and we're still waiting for wave two of chilling rain, blah, 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 the truth of the matter is that for the most part, they have more product than they have probably in the past four years on store shelves. And that's because COVID shut them down. And then as soon as they could, they were ramped up and ready to go. They expanded business because they realized demand is also at an all time high. So my philosophy is usually for modern product, don't buy it, don't touch it, just give it a few years. Don't give it 10 years, obviously that's not a good strategy, but give it like two or three years. And then what you'll normally find is that assuming you get a chance to get some reprints and things are still mainly in the TCG rotation, which is an important measure, that is usually as long as it takes for you to get your product. So just as an example, I'm not pressed about Sword and Shield booster boxes. They are approaching 200 bucks, but that's because no one's printing that stuff right now. You might ask, well, Ryan, why is no one printing that stuff right now? Oh, I don't know. There's a little thing called celebrations coming out in a few months. And frankly, all the different facilities that Pokemon is currently working with, I guarantee you the only thing they are allowed to print is celebrations and then probably October 30th, they're going to be told, okay, start printing the new fusion set. And that's going to be it, period, end of story. But at a certain point, they're going to have the ability to resume normal printing capacity. And at that point, I, it, I, I would personally be shocked 
if we don't see reprints of everything from Sword and Shield base all the way through. Because in reality, none of those sets ever got the appropriate amount of printing. And if you need any evidence of this, mind you, I could be talking complete hot air at the moment, as I frequently do, but if you need any evidence of this, just look at the odd availability of Vivid Voltage. Vivid Voltage came out in late 2020, has no relation to the current sets, and frankly, the current sets are doing great by themselves. Between the birds and Chilling Rain and Rayquaza and the evolutions in Evolving Skies, there's really no mathematical reason for them to be printing Vivid right now. But it seems like they have enough capacity that they have been able to manufacture, print, cut, and distribute a lot of Vivid Voltage booster boxes. And that's why they've occasionally popped up on places like Amazon for $120. Again, not quite MSRP, not quite distributor pricing, but basically splits the middle of the two at a buck 20. And frankly, it's nice because Vivid Voltage was a $200 booster box as well. So going down $80 and critically going below that MSRP of about $143 like you would see on the Pokemon Center is a very important measure because once that happens, it's really just a matter of price competition. Some people might say, oh, well, you know, you can give me $115 a box or blah, blah, blah. So. That's my theory and my philosophy on modern. However, these guys don't follow quite that frame. And that's why these things scare me. Um, the truth of the matter is, it's a little too early to say anything authoritatively. Because these Chilling Rain ETBs, for example, literally came out less than three months ago. So to say I have a definitive answer for you one way or the other is foolish. And frankly, I would never do that. The truth of the matter is, uh, of the products you're seeing on screen right now, two of them have been released, and one of them, quite literally, has not been released yet. So again, it's impossible to say if these are ever going to get a reprint. However, I can try to base my assumptions off what I've seen in the past, and what I've seen in the past is a limited, small print that may be broken up into one printing run or two printing runs. In case anybody's curious, and there's a lot of debate about this, but I distinctly remember that the Hidden Fates Ultra Premium Collection was actually one of those products where the print run was small and the print run was long. So it was kind of weird because it was almost like two print runs. You got some at the beginning, you got some at the end, but a long story short, the, uh, the main takeaway is that there was a small number of products ever released and that's why nowadays those items carry a significant premium because people recognize that. Similarly, I think there's an opportunity here because let's just pretend that these have a longer print run than we actually think and let's just pretend that the only reason they aren't making more of these right now is because they're dedicating resources to celebrations, then logically what might end up happening is you might end up in a situation where they do another drop randomly. And again, it's not like the Pokemon Center doesn't do that on occasion. In August of 2021, we had Lost Thunder ETBs listed on the Pokemon Center. Mind you, the site immediately crashed and burned because everybody was freaking out and going towards those. But the main takeaway is, yeah, there were actually Lost Thunder ETBs printed and ready to be sold on the Pokemon Center. So it's not shocking or concerning to think that, yeah, maybe we will get a second chance at these. So my philosophy, at least right now, is that if you haven't gotten your hands on any of these yet, sit tight, hang out, chill out. Um, worst case scenario, it is a modern product, which means right now demand is artificially high because everybody wants this stuff. If, in about a year's time, they don't reprint it, hopefully, demand will have cooled off enough that auction prices, mind you, these are buy it now prices, but auction prices should start reflecting the little bit of age. Typical modern product will go up right around release, will go down in the short term, and then will go up in the long run as it turns to vintage product. So in theory, if you time it out correctly, you should really be playing a waiting game here with any of this stuff. You should wait and watch prices. If within the next year they don't reprint and you don't get another shot at MSRP, the best you can probably do is keep an eye out for auctions. Again, buy it now is usually artificially high, but auctions will reflect the true market price that the stuff is demanded at. And then you simply pick it up then. So my philosophy, wait, 
watch and then if you get a chance to pick it up at msrp do that otherwise watch out for those auctions that'll probably be the truest price you could pick this stuff up, up at four in the short term I think there's an opportunity here for Pokemon to reprint stuff. Again, anybody telling you that this stuff is ultra limited edition and needs to be bought and held on right now is ignoring the fact that the stuff was only literally created three months ago. And distinctly, purely out of that, there is an inherent risk to what they're saying. So anybody saying that right now, I personally would choose to disagree with purely on the basis of the stuff is too 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 short lived as of right now for us to be able to say anything definitive on and then in the future you know we'll certainly see if they get a chance to reprint it bear in mind the 25th anniversary has been a busy year for pokemon uh with the variety of sets they've printed and they've already said or you know it's been speculated that come 2022 they're gonna you know chill out just a little bit because they're not going to be pumping the market full of trading cards um purely for the reason of the 25th anniversary they're going to go back to their normal amount of sets per year they're going to be you know printing cards to meet demand but they're certainly not going to be doing the absolute most like what they have been doing this year between shining fate celebrations all the new sets all the new alt arts and everything else going on for the 25th anniversary so in theory that extra bandwidth allows them to perhaps reprint some of this stuff again in the grand scheme of things it's going to be small short numbers but it does give you another opportunity to pick it up at msrp but with all that said friends thanks again for checking out another video if you learned anything new in today's video about these pokemon center etbs the way that you know these limited prints tend to run or anything of the nature feel free to leave a like on the video and of course if you're not already feel free to subscribe to join the gengar gang but with all that said friends thanks again for checking out another video i hope you guys are having an amazing day and we will talk soon peace